It's time to dish. I'm Ed DeRosa with the Paddock Prince, David Levitch. David, we had two grade ones, and not in just name only. These were probably two of the best races for older horses this century. Wouldn't you agree? Um, if I, the one at Saratoga was a lot better than the one at Del Mar, <laughs> if we're talking about older horses, I I still don't. When I was watching the race, I thought the mixto was like done. And I thought the six was just gone. And somehow Mixto, who was eligible for a non-winners of one, I think, came back to a resurge at a 42 to one or whatever. But I thought the race in Saratoga was the winner was pretty stout. I'm not going to lie. He pressed the pace, put the four to five favorite away and kind of pulled away, even though Tappa Trice and some others did not exactly show up in there. Yeah, that was uh, I guess you'd want to be disappointed in Arthur's ride. But I mean, he ran with the winner the whole way and. The odds going into the gate, you would think, oh, Arthur's ride is going to be the one to get the better of it. Ended up being Highland Falls. And for me, I, I want to be dismissive, uh, but it's shades of Nick's go in my mind, especially how Delmar plays. Uh, he, you have to think he's a player there if he's able to to run on the front end like that. Yeah, I think both of them are players. I don't know. I Actually, I, Arthur's ride's a little... I don't know what the I don't know what that was. He yeah, was kind of biased. I mean, I'd rather have Highland Falls in the class. Yeah, no, he definitely. If he runs that race, he's going to have a big shot. Um, he the rider upgrade in terms of like the aggressiveness. <laughs> Not you know Pratt's very aggressive, so him being aggressive like that. Um, look, do you know who actually this just thought? Do you know who that horse is? I have to. No. Do you know who Long River is? The one of the best Aqueduct inner horses of all time. Yeah, I remember the name. Yeah, he's sure. got some. Yeah, he won the Dubai World Cup prep or something. I was looking up his pedigree, okay. and I was like, "Well, this this horse is." is he Karen? The, yes, he was, and the mom okay. was Round Pond, who won the Distaff, I think, back in the day. Um, so that horse has the pedigree to get sure. better and better as time goes on. So, honestly, I was very impressed with him, and I wasn't as um unimpressed with Arthur's ride as I was Tap and Trice. I thought Tap and Trice was terrible. He had a perfect trip. He had dead aim on the top two, and he folded like a cheap suit. I don't know what that right. performance was. horse he was. beat last time. Yeah, by five lengths. Yeah. No, he's uh, – He was yeah, – that, uh, that, That's not a race you want to go on to the Classic with, but – No, he'll have to run again, I'm sure, in the Woodward. He's got to run again. You can't go in – I mean, I would think. Right. But yeah, I, I saw Arthur's rides training up, so – well, that's that's no surprise. Highland Falls too, I would think. Highland Falls is mixed though as well. We're not going to forget about racing's newest Grade One winner, mixed though. But I think <laughs> he's training up as well. Won the the California Crown, which I guess has already been bequeathed to Muth. Yeah, Muth is running, and then um, I'm sure there'll be some random fillers that run in there. I thought Muth actually looked pretty good though. I know he didn't beat the greatest field, but it wasn't like wasn't a bad field like he pressed a hot pace and he put away his stable mate who's a solid horse i thought he actually ran i mean moose obviously a good horse um we'll see how he does is the california crown nine furlongs or ten furlongs nine nine million dollars in it at least i would i'm not That's sure part if of the, pegasus uh, on it or what yeah. but yeah it's it's a big is purse the second race or the first race of the pegasus it's the second i think they started with the preakness that's what i thought yeah what I thought because that wouldn't be a who won the previous issue. Oh, <laughs> Lucas, Lucas, it was Lucas. Oh, right. So, no, but he, he, can't get, he can't get the bonus. He's not, nobody's getting the bonus this year. It, I think it should be if you win three and three of those in a now, obvious, I guess it has to start with the preakness though, because that's the three year old race. Yeah, I was thinking it shouldn't matter, but it has to matter because. You're not going to run in the Pegasus as a three-year-old, so no, no. The Pegasus is it's January, I guess. But they no, should anyways. have a mini though if you win both, like that. Yeah, incentivize that. Well, well here's the okay. Here's my question though. I, I had said, and I think this was after the Pacific Classic, let alone the Gold Cup. But it seems like at this point, the top four choices are going to be three-year-olds. Yeah, fierceness. fierceness. Japanese City of horse. Troy, Forever Young. Who's the fourth? And then, I mean, it, depending on what Sierra Leone, if he takes and money, Muth. door knock. Muth, I guess if he runs well choices. in the claiming crown. If, Clay, if Muth runs crazy good in the claiming, cl oh. claiming crown, the million dollar <laughs> race. I said he's not running in the claiming crown, everybody. If he runs well in that race at Santa Anita, he could also be up there. That's right. He's kind of got a following. Yeah, yeah. I think the. Um, 
the older horses this year might be in trouble, but I think that that sets up for a good four-year-old campaign if all these horses come back to run. Like this could be a crazy good handicap division next year. I would think most of them are going to run. I guess fierceness. I guess if he won the classic somehow, I don't know if he would run again. But right. I don't know. Well, if Gornox, Penthrift's already said they're yeah in on that. So I mean, they won't all come back. But I tell you, the one thing I really want is an American jockey on Forever Young. You're not going to get that. I know. You're not. I'll tell you one I mean, thing. I don't know how much. I don't know how much. I'd say that know. anywhere, but especially at Del Mar, where you, I mean, position is essential. Oh, I don't know if you've been paying attention to Del Mar a lot or people out there have been paying attention as much, but if you are not somewhat close to the, at that racetrack, like even the turf races, they'll go 22 and 45 and they'll just dead hold together. Yeah. And dirt's kind of the same way. So, yeah, I'm with you on that. The pace is going to have to be. But he could be a nice try super filler for those people out there with Sierra Leone just sucking up for fourth. Yeah, I mean, the problem is they're short prices. So fill, filling out the try behind five to two fierceness isn't exciting. Well, I saw people listening. City of Troy is the horse to beat. If you bet that horse. Yeah. Under five to one, you have you yeah. have um, I mean, you I, have problems gambling. I love Aiden. I love that they're trying, like it's sporting, but you just can't take a short. Pro- and you, he's by Galileo, right? Yes, I mean, most most of his not, horses are. That horse does not throw dirt runners. Like we have a sample size, it's not good. Well, and it's not like the classic is weak this year. The three year olds are pretty darn good. Yeah. And they're going to get better in two months. You got to think all these horses, I mean, Sierra Leone, Fierceness, Doorknock, all these horses are going to be coming into the race just fully cranked up after a two month break to run their best races. Um, it is a little shame of all the Breeders' Cup, like all these preps kind of, you know, like the preps at Aqueduct, and they're not going to be. The two year old races will be fun, like Champagne for Zed, all the ones at Keeneland, but the older horse right. preps are not going to be very exciting. No, there's there's some air out of the balloon for sure. I mean, Keeneland still with the Fall Stars, I think does okay, but yeah, especially the turf race. I mean, what's happened to, I mean, the Flower Bowl and Gold Cup used to be at Belmont, and that was huge. So, yeah. Well, Chancer looked good, two year olds. He did look good. I was, I was against, but, uh, he looks. I could Grand be dead wrong about this, but he looks like such a good one turn closer. I, I hope he run. I hope he runs in the race at Keeneland, going two turns. The uh, futurity, um, British future, just to see if he can do it going two turns. Because man, sure. he he's got a nice one turn kick. But if he runs in the Champagne, we're not really gonna know. Well, then if he wins the Champagne and you have questions at two turns, that's a bet against – well, especially with his running. I would bet against him. I, even if he won the race, I would bet against him just yeah. because – I mean, who won last year? Fierceness, he was kind of, he's a corky horse, though. But the year before that, Forte went to the um, race at Keeneland. Uh, in Wonder Wheel was that year, too. The, was she the same year as Forte? Yep. She won the um, race at Keeneland and then won yeah, the Breeders' Cup. Yeah, she was. She won – so I don't know. I just feel like two turns can sign sometimes help, but then again, I guess Fierce instead of last year, but he's a enigma of a horse anyway. Well, I have good news for the Gold Cup and Pacific Classic. What's that? They took a lot of lumps this weekend, grade one, especially the Pacific Classic. But there is no chance that they will be the worst grade one this year. No, it's the race at Kentucky Downs, That's and you're correct. trying to set me up for it. It's the it, I've actually put it on Twitter today. The race when I saw Grade One on that field, I was literally because Nick Tamro, who does the line there, he tweeted. I don't even know. I, I don't know what I don't. I think I'd make everybody five to one. <laughs> I know it's not allowed, but I mean that race is so bad. But thank God yeah. it's a Grade One. That's uh, uh, damnation on the uh, the graded stakes committee for sure. That. I mean, how much is the made of grade one? Worth? I don't even if they got the top three year old turf sprinters right now, whatever that means, it shouldn't be a grade one. Uh, and isn't the, there's no stakes winners is an abomination. Isn't it the Cogburn race a grade two? The, uh, what the race he no, he's in the race at Kentucky Down Saturday. Oh, yes. I think he's in, he's in a grade two though, right? So the I, older horse one, I, I would think one. those will probably flip. Next yeah. year, I mean, th- this cannot stay a grade one, given the field. I mean, unless, I guess they can go on to do great things over the next three They're months. They're not going to. They're yeah, not going it, to. It's a disgrace. Uh, no, no Naira like this week, are you doing Delmar. Colonial? No, I'm doing Del Mar and Kentucky Downs. Oh, okay. 
Kentucky Downs is um, a unique place, so it takes a little it's a Yeah, well, I mean, that's where the handle is, is those two places. Yeah, but how much is the grade one actually worth? Is it actually worth $2 million, or is it worth like $1.1 million if a certain horse wins? Yeah, I mean, you need to be a part of the KTDF, or you don't get all the money. Because I think the favorite is not the uh, mod horse. Which that, I mean, the Nashville Derby was, I mean, 800000 was left on the table. Because that yeah, horse I saw was the, in KTDF. I saw the guitar playing after. It looked like Nashville in the winter circle. Yeah, it's totally Nashville. Yeah, it's very similar, but... I don't know. They do get those nice bottles of bourbon. I will say they that. do. I actually have one. I didn't win a race there, but I actually got my hands on one, and they are pretty cool. Last last year wasn't from this year, but the I ball, thought the you did race there this year. No, he's not running. No. Oh. Trainer boss man called and said he's losing some weight. Needs to gain some weight first. No, especially running there, you don't want to go in less than fit. Yeah, it was going to go a mile and a half. So I don't know Ooh. if that would have worked out too well. Uphill. Which is like twenty seven for a long so. <laughs> there. All right. Man. Well, well, fierceness favorite for the classic. Put a bow on that. Um, as of right now, I mean, I don't know. Yeah, I. Would, but I mean, he's going to be the favorite. He might be seven to two though, so I don't think it's going to be some right. like. Yeah, yeah, I would probably say at this point. I don't know. What the, is so forever young? Not prepping. Uh, I mean, he might, I mean, like last year that, uh, Derma, Derma Sotagake ran in some race. I mean, I don't know things well enough over there to, to know the class, but I would think he might have something like that. You know, the thing about fierceness is too, and some of these horses, if fierceness, if there's 12 horses in the gate, 10 horses in the gate, if he somehow gets an outside post, I think he's going to be hard to beat. If he got like post one or two or something like that, I don't know if I can play that horse because I'm starting to think he's a horse that has to be outside stalking. I don't even know if he wants to be gun to the lead. He just needs to be doing his thing in a rhythm right. on the outside. So like, it's going to be real interesting if he gets an inside post. What's the I think excuse really in the derby then? I don't know. I, I, well, you know, they said after the Jim Dandy, he gained, he kept his weight and gained weight. I maybe after the Florida Derby, he just did. Maybe I don't know. He just the pace fell apart in the Derby, though. Right. That's why I love when people say the winner wasn't best in the Derby. I thought the winner was definitely best in the Derby. He saved ground and close to a hot pace, but he's the one who made the first move. And the race yeah, completely fell apart to the pace for sure. Yeah, but that race dead fell apart. And he held on. What happened to him, by the way? He's he done? Magdalena. Uh, I bet he'll be back at four. Run at Oaklawn. Yeah, they'll be running for like $1.8 million on a <laughs> grade three in February. I mean, those owners are from there, so they'll get to, you know, they'll probably get a nice little appearance fee to bring the Derby winner to Oaklawn. Yeah. Well, he did well there. Yeah. No, I, I get it. And the Phillies running in the um, cotillion. Yeah. McPeak, don't back down. He doesn't. I wouldn't back down for a million. I saw the field. There's like five horses right now. I wouldn't back down for a million. Well, and one, and then one of the ones, the Alabama winner, she beat already. Yeah, Easily. it's like, yeah, no, it's the horse that won at Charlestown, the power squeeze you mentioned, and some others. Yeah. Others. <laughs> others, but. All right. Well, Delmar and Kentucky Downs this week. Closing weekend at Del Mar, grade one, futurity. I'm sure Bob's going to win his 19th in each race. <laughs> so does that mean Churchill next week? Are they the 13th? They are the 12th, I think. Yeah, that's right, because Aqueduct is the 13th on Friday and Churchill And the Kentucky 12th, so. Downs races the 11th. The 11th. They go Thursday, Saturday, Sunday, Wednesday, and then Churchill Thursday, Aqueduct Friday. All right. That'll keep you busy. That will keep me busy. I like fall racing. I think summer racing is fun because of the buzz, but I think fall racing is the best racing. Like the Churchill, Keeneland, Churchill, like that's the best three-month stretch of racing, yeah. I feel like, especially in Kentucky. And then ending so. with the Breeders' Cup. Yep, I agree. Well, and the Churchill meet in November is great. So That's what I was saying, ending with that meet. Like that's like the best meet right. of any meet at Churchill. So. Agreed. A rare, a, no, not so rare agreement, at least when it comes to horse racing. All right, let's end the video now. All right. That's the dish. Good luck, everybody.